We're back on the Palouse this afternoon as it's Pac-12 Women's Soccer presented by Giza Credit Union, the Utah Utes visiting the Washington State Cougars and it's Washington State's Senior Day. Welcome inside the booth, everybody. Trevor Williams with you here from the lower soccer field. So glad to be with all of you for what should be a very enticing match this afternoon between the Cougars and the Utes. With Washington State coming off a 1-0 victory on Thursday against Colorado. We pick up in this one with Nadia Cooper, and it was a mighty physical match as evidenced there, and she's able to add another clean sheet to her career resume. Margie DeTrezio, the straw that stirs the drink for Todd Schulenberger's Cougars. Seventh goal of the season here past Colorado, and it was set up by Reese Tappen. A great clear out of the box. DeTrezio boxed the defender and was able to run free down the field, get a spot for that seventh goal of the season. With that, she passed Elise Bennett in career points. Now at 65, and there are many Cougars knocking on records. We'll talk about that throughout the afternoon, especially with this senior class. For the Utes on Thursday night, it was a bit of a frustrating one over in Seattle against the Washington Huskies. Evelyn Vitale was the starter in goal for the Utes. And Utah got an early opportunity, but then it was the Huskies with two goals in the middle of that first half to really open it up. Set pieces were a problem for the Utes. They did have a bright spot though. Kelly Bullock with a goal against Washington in the second half. Still for the Utes, it was not enough on Thursday. They fell three to one. A thing to watch out for as we talk about the physical matches, like what was played on Thursday night in Pullman. Seven penalty kicks this year for the Utes, so physicality could be key in this one. Washington State, as we mentioned, it is senior day for the Cougars. They are honoring nine in their pregame ceremony today. And uh, for the Cougars, these have, these players have ranged from ones who have helped the Cougars to College Cup performances uh, to being career leaders at Washington State. It's Utah and Washington State coming up this afternoon. Pac-12 Women's Soccer presented by Giza Credit Union. Our opening kickoff is next. Welcome into Pullman, Washington, Senior Day today. The Washington State Cougars and the Utah Utes from the lower soccer field. Trevor Williams and our Pac-12 Plus crew with you here from the lower soccer field. So glad to have all of you with us. It's gonna be a fun one today between the Utes and the Cougars. Two teams fighting for position in the Pac-12 Conference. As you take a look at the starting 11 for Utah, Casey Wardle will be back in net for the Utes. We mentioned in the open it was Evelyn Vitale against UW. Vitale and Wardle, Wardle have uh, split the goalkeeping duties this year in Pac-12 play. So it goes back to Wardle, and you see the rest of Hideki Nakata's starting 11 for the Utah Utes wearing the red jerseys this afternoon. Washington State on senior day, gonna get Marin Wilden into the starting 11. It's an important match for the Cougars. All of them are now the rest of the way home. Four more for the Cougars, which maybe you put them on paper, you say they should be matches Washington State can win. That's certainly the path forward for the Cougars to make a run at the postseason, which is still very much in play for Todd Schulenberger's Washington State Cougars. And you see that starting 11 right there. Reagan Kachow also moves into the starting 11, a little different from the last time out for the Cougars. She had a goal against Arizona on October 5th. Super talented freshman from Thornton, Colorado. As we mentioned, it's an important time of year for Washington State trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. And the RPI right now is really good for the Cougars. 41 in the RPI. Utah is at 81. So still on the, the outside of the picture of where they would need to be. And they have shown some brilliant flashes this year. So take a look at the Washington State bench. It will be Utah starting with possession this afternoon. Right now, of course, there's a big race at the top of the conference between UCLA, Stanford, USC, Arizona State for tops in the league. Washington State comes in today sitting right in the middle, tied with Washington in seventh. Those two teams will finish the regular season against one another. Marin Granger. To survey forward. Bridget Reekin will race back to it. She has the 
right hand heavily wrapped. Shouldn't impact her play today for the Cougars. Turner electing to go back to Nadia Cooper, the Washington State goalkeeper. Oh, lots of footing there, bringing it out to Brianna McReynolds. McReynolds being marked up by Katie O'Kane, trying to find Marin Wilden up forward. Senior day, as we mentioned, for the Cougars. So you see Wilden in there from Upland, California, is eligible for a COVID relief season. We'll see that still over the next two years in college soccer with seniors who have that extra year of eligibility remaining. Chased down and played back to Wardle. Ends up clearing it into the Utah bench. Reese tapping with the throw in. Washington State coming off a 1 0 win against Colorado earlier this week. Utah fell 3 to 1 to the University of Washington. This ball crossed in by Kachow. Reynolds was there. Catch made by Wardle. Reagan Kachow, freshman midfielder from Thornton, Colorado. As you get a look at Casey Wardle, the junior goalkeeper for Utah, we mentioned, has gone back and forth with Evelyn Vitali in net. Wardle has second most saves in the Pac-12, 61 behind Oregon State's Haley Cole. Up forward for Ryan Cole for Utah. No relation, out wide to Kelly Bullock. Bullock had the goal against Washington earlier this week. Brings it into an opportunity for Standish. Standish over the ball back with Bullock. This is inside the 18 dangerous area. And Brianna Pizarro gets it out of there for Washington State. Kelly Bullock, a sophomore forward from Salt Lake City. The goal last time out, her third of the season. Third of the career for the sophomore. Who had three assists on her freshman campaign. Lindsey Turner able to turn that off Utah for a Washington State throw in. Angled off of Taliana Kafusi, senior forward who we will keep an eye on. 16 career goals for Kafusi. Brown optioning back through Alex Schoenstatt. Pivoting out of trouble, Bailey Jackson. It gets back to Bullock. Still those shots on the ground are tough to come up with against Bullock. Good challenge from Kennedy Shainauer on Reese Tappen before it comes up field for Utah throwing. There's Courtney Brown with it. Now, Lilia Bloom started all 16 matches that she's played in. Alex Schoenstatt trying to find Kafusi down in that corner, set up an opportunity for Utah. Clock has stopped and there might be a player with some blood. Looks like Lilia Bloom. We mentioned starting in all 16 matches she's played. Had a goal against Oregon earlier this year. Runs to get down on the ball, being chased by Tappen. Kafusi gets a head on it, but well wide of target. Nadia Cooper will go chase it down. Cooper and the Cougars electing to build from the back. They got a first half game winning goal from Margie Detrizio on Thursday night against Colorado. It was Detrizio's 25th for a career seventh of the season. Offered back at Wardle and a little misplay of the kick. So now McReynolds goes and gets down to the ball. The play back top of the box. Kachow tries to one time it off the body of Granger. Cutler trying to hang with it. Ends up being cut away by Brooklyn Blaylock out of the back. 
Cutler and Blaylock locked up again. Cutler knocked it off of Blaylock. Washington State's throw. Cougs trying to mount a little challenge here in the sixth minute. Nia Cutler, one of the seniors being honored today. Probably crossed the 400 minute mark on her season. Played just 160 minutes last year for the Cougars. Has been active in 14 of 15 matches this year for Todd Schulenberger's Cougs. Who come in 9-5-1 on the season, 2-4-1. Impact 12 play. As I said, there's your belief on this team. You take care of business down the stretch. If you can get results here in your final four, you're going to see that point total go up. It should bring the Cougars up in the standings. Their preseason picked fifth. I think right now, the way it looks in the Pac 12, probably top six are going to be NCAA tournament teams. So Washington State's right on the edge of that with Colorado, who they just beat on Thursday. DeTrezio trying to get an angle from the corner. It was deflected by Granger. And Shanauer got tugged. The Utah possession, they reset it quickly. Referee is Cedric Adams today. Josh Madison over across the way. Or Josh Madison's one of the Assistant referees on the side, along with Kevin Clarence Owl and then Luke Stabens over at the table. Utah into space. Reese Tappen steps up into a lane. Utah third year head coach Hideki Nakata, former Stanford assistant. Obviously knows what it takes to build an excellent program. Wardle in a bit of a dangerous area with Cutler slicing in there. A couple times here inside the 18 early on for Casey Wardle. There have been some be ill-advised plays. Missed a clearance out a couple possessions ago. And then they're just keeping it a little long with the talent of the Washington State forwards. Cutler able to angle it. And off of Schoenstatt for a Washington State corner kick. Heading over to take it for the Cougars is Brianna Pizarro. Pizarro, one of the seniors today in Oregon State transfer, who's played a majority of this Pac-12 season. 31 career matches at Oregon State has played eight, now nine at Washington State. Here's her corner kick opportunity. Bridger Rican got ahead on it. It's popped over the crossbar. Wardle was positioned. Crossbar there as well. Couldn't tell if it was right over the top or if Wardle did indeed have to direct it there. Here's a look back at the opportunity. Yeah, it did look just over the top of that crossbar, but Bridget Rican so dangerous from that spot. Nine career goals, three this season and really just the specialist at getting on the opposite end of the Cougar set pieces. Kacha out to Reese Tappet. Finds Margie DeTrezio. Nice play by Blaylock off of, no, it was DeTrezio off of Blaylock for the corner kick. And that's another Cougar. Look for a moment like Brooklyn Blaylock thought she had angled it off of Margie DeTrezio and yeah, the officials are gonna change that call. Cedric Adams stepped in and said it was off of DeTrezio. So goal kick for Casey Wardle coming after the short opportunity with Granger trying to come up the sideline and a Washington State throwing right away. Another good pressure by the Cougars here in these opening 10 minutes. Pizarro trying to feed the box. Schoenstatt got a foot in on it. Misdirection, Wilden was trying to corral inside the 18.
Nadia Cooper is well outside of the Cougar box coming to Keeley Copper. Center back we haven't gotten to talk about yet, but another one of the seniors. Cougs have a lot of them honored today, nine that we talked about earlier on. Brandon McReynolds, Isabella Weaver, Bridget Reekin. We know for sure they've exhausted all eligibility. But uh, you still wonder about Copper, Mc McClellan, Pizarro, Wilden, Detrizio, Cutler. If they could all have additional eligibility left. And then uh, Grayson Lynch, who's in there with a the possibility of what you would imagine could be a, a medical year as well. Injured early in the Washington State season. Back in the Portland match, Cougs' season have really gone most of the way without their second career leading goal scorer in Lynch with 17 goals for her Washington State career. That's why detrizio has been you know, the star of the Washington State attack. Good play by Reese Tapp inside of the foot to hold it in. Chance for Kacha to get across. Bullock deflected it. It'll go for a throw in. Reese Tappet had the outstanding assist on Thursday to Detrizio. Kind of a clearance away from net out to midfield. Detrizio boxed out a defender and then took it from midfield all the way to the box to finish straight on net being challenged by Ryan Cole. Detrizio emerges with it. Pizarro in tight space. Good player marking from Utah. Detrizio locks cleats up, keeps it at Washington State's feet, and Kachow wasn't able to get it on net. The All-Pac-12 second teamer, Margie Detrizio, senior from Chandler, Arizona. 28 points for the Cougars last year, the most since 2019. Player named Morgan Weaver, who's known well in these parts for the Cougars. Of course, a former All-American, part of the team that got Washington State to the College Cup in San Jose. The Cougars struck first back in that semifinal against North Carolina. The Tar Heels just had an answer. What a season that was for Washington State. The Cougars want to get back into the postseason this year to have an opportunity to make some magic. Brianna McReynolds with Kelly Bullock challenging her. McReynolds trying to stay with it. Crowd's lively so far this afternoon. Four shots for the Cougars early on, two for Utah. Here's Kelly Bullock, Utah's goal scorer back on Thursday. It's played and started in all 17. Had other goals this year against Utah Valley and Cal State Fullerton. Off this quick change of direction, Utah. Trying to find something through the Cougar back line. Turned around by Brianna Pizarro. Pizarro, who's also in the Puerto Rican national team player pool. Native of the state of New York. Lindsey Turner trying to get in there with Kafusi. And Kafusi stands out. On the field, 5'11 forward. Nadia Cooper making the catch on that ball into the box. Italiana Cafusi, 16 career goals. That's the best on Utah's side. Cafusi has five this season. Three Cougars back. Copper, nice play right away to flip it back out to midfield. And Kachow able to take it away from the feet of Courtney Brown. Anaya Cutler, nice header to move it back into a spot where she can get to the right foot. It peppers Wardle, it makes the excellent catch. Good opportunity for the Cougars and Cutler, maybe the toughest shot so far on Washington State's fifth of the afternoon.
Lilia Bloom, little room to carry on forward. Bloom has options left and right, goes to the left with Kafusi. Bridget Rican pokes it out. Pushed back into Shanehour. Lindsey Turner got a foot to it. Utah, after all that aerial work along the side, they're electing to play it back to Trezio, right up in the goalkeeper, Wardle. Wardle's trying to scamper back. Well, Blaylock gets Utah a little room momentarily before Turner took it away. Tappan trying to serve Detrizio again as the two connected on Thursday. And a flag up for an offside call. Casey Ward will take it from this spot. This is a look back at that great opportunity for Anaya Cutler. It bounced off the hands of Wardle, but she was able to keep it square right in front. As we said, maybe the best of the Cougars five shot attempts so far in these first 16 minutes. Great work by Marin Wilden to get the throw in for WSU. The Cougars press up, Reek in there for it. Well, the Cougars are still putting a lot of pressure on the Utah box. Definitely Wardle and the Utes trying to build from the back as well. We've seen two goalkeepers that are not sending a lot in the midfield. Little breezy this afternoon, Pullman. Brianna McReynolds almost got into that for the Cougars. It's not frigid, but it's a cool fall afternoon. Overcast skies on the Palouse. Cole out wide with Bullock. Bullock getting it back to the left foot of Cole who rockets it high. A little give and go there. Ryan Cole doesn't have a goal this year. Last year's assist leader for the Utes. Has now started each of the last four matches. And here's the opportunity she gets back from Kelly Bullock. Found a slot with some open space. You can see just high, but a good spot. Pizarro shaking it back out right. Long run for Kacha to keep it in play and does. Now using some fancy footwork over the ball, trying to Split a couple defenders, got it to Cutler, blocked by Granger. Clearance never makes it out of there, McReynolds gets on it. Too soft of a pass. Intended back for Kachow, taken away by Lilia Bloom in Utah. Utah was frustrated by the early goals surrendered to Washington on Thursday. Bullock trying to help get the Utes on the board first, was trying to find Kafusi in front of the net. Tappen covers to the ball far side, chased by Shane Hour. Cleared off for another Washington State throw in. You say Marin Wilden, 13th match, two starts this year. Scored a game winner against Denver last year. Her first career goal two years ago in the NCAA tournament against Montana. A former top 50 recruit. Detrizio gets to the bouncing ball. Coming into the play to try to help get to it was Schoenstatt and then took a shove from Detrizio. The officials there were all over it. A little discussion now between Hideki Nakata and our referee this afternoon, Cedric Adams. The 
Kata wanting a little more talking to to Detrizio after that shove. Flagged indicated Washington State did not keep it in on the side. So Butch hanging out with the fans here at the lower soccer field in Pullman. Final home match of the season for Washington State. Kachow unable to keep it in along the side. See the first sub of the afternoon. Uh, not yet. Washington State forced that out of play. So the sub still waits. Shane Hour got locked up around the hip of Lindsey Turner. Kennedy Shanauer, goal against Oregon State. Three-time All-League first-teamer. Out of high school in San Jose. It's great in the club circuit as well. Well, the officials stop things. Nobody was set off that free kick, so it goes back to where it was before for Utah. We'll try it again for Marin Granger. Offered up to Katie O'Kane, a Washington transfer. Played for the Huskies a few years back. Reese Tappan in a hard collision. Tappan was banged up on Thursday as well against Colorado. By the look of it, against the Buffs, kind of had a a bit of a bloody nose on Thursday, and wonder if she took some contact again here later in the weekend. The athletic training staff will have to tend to that for Reese Tappan. Tappan's really been mixing up with Kennedy Shanehour. Shane Hour, the aggressive young forward that we were talking about from San Jose. Tamman took a moment on the side and will already come right back in for Washington State. Heads up to midfield to wait to check in. Pizarro had it tackled by Bullock, and Bullock got to the ball. Nice defensive play by the sophomore from Salt Lake City. Brandon McReynolds, equally nice defensive play to get back into it. Cutler trying to stay on side. Heads it and collides with Wardle. Cleared out by Cole. Cougars trying to keep the pressure on. It's aggressive at the point of attack. And Margie DeTrezio called for impeding Utah. Another close opportunity for the Cougars. Anaya Cutler timing a run on side. I was trying to find a way to head it around Casey Wardle for Utah. But Wardle got there in time despite the collision to keep the ball from getting towards net. Cutler turns at midfield. O'Kane was trying to race back there. Great defensive play to recover and get it away from Kachow. Sent in by Bloom on a bounce. Nice job off the line by Nadia Cooper to go get it. Cooper is the former freshman and goalkeeper of the year in the Pac-12 a couple years ago, 26 career wins. We mentioned in the open her 14th shutout just a few days back against Colorado. Showing stat to Kafusi, Bridget Rekin, right there to fight through it. Utah looking for space again. Blaylock, a dangerous pass back to Granger. 
Cougar forwards, Cutler and Detrezio have really been lurking up there and they've been doing their best to try to cause some havoc right in front of Casey Wardle. A referee again calling Washington State for kind of pinning out Utah midfielder. Detrezio trying to get in the way of the kick. You can see frustrated right now. The Cougars do finally get to get to that sub that's been waiting for a while. Naomi Clark. Megan Santa Cruz also for the Cougars comes back. Santa Cruz played a ton on Thursday. Hit the post against Colorado. Naomi Clark, you see there, freshman from Parker, Colorado. 16th match, four starts this year. She scored 45 goals in 44 high school matches at Grandview High School. Has netted three for the Cougars. Santa Cruz trying to get it out to Clark. The Cougars have fresh legs on this side of the field. And here goes Naomi Clark down towards the end line. Clark takes a lot of contact from Brooklyn Blaylock who fights it off for the goal kick. Clark, funny enough, played in a Colorado State Championship game against Reagan Kachow, starting midfielder for the Cougars, who's out of Thornton, Colorado. Now they find themselves on the same team here in Pullman. Up into open space and really flying with it is Bloom coming out to Bullock. Bullock offering it forward for Brown. Brown in front, dangerous spot. It was just behind Kafusi. Tappen sending it out. McReynolds, big kick on to the Utah box. Beautiful run of play for the Utes. Set up by the run from Lilia Bloom and on the excellent cross from Courtney Brown. Margie Detrezio trying to get back to this with Granger. Pizarro trying to win this away from Bullock. Ball pinballing there in midfield. Lindsey Turner gets in the way of things. Cougars get to some space. Clark has Santa Cruz out to her right, goes there. Santa Cruz trying to get across again, foot in the right spot for Blaylock. Shanauer just carrying on forward with it. Two on five now. Shanauer roaring to the box. Kafusi gets a right footed shot just wide. And Utah's best early opportunity for their senior talented forward, Taliana Kafusi. Seven shots now in her career against Washington State. Hasn't scored against the Cougars, but this was mighty close. So just out beyond the frame. Santa Cruz and Clark. The sophomore Schoenstatt getting it away from Clark. It's been a really important effort by Brooklyn Blaylock. Blaylock's been in to take away some crossing opportunities early for the Cougars, earn a couple goal kicks for Utah as well. Back into the middle to Reagan Kachow. Sees Megan Santa Cruz out. Santa Cruz this time against Schoenstatt. Santa Cruz gets to the end line. Got a cross off. No Cougar on the receiving end. Lindsey Turner was going to try to serve it back into the box. Offered over to Brianna Pizarro. Pizarro sees an opportunity to cross one. Does so off of Bullock for a Washington State corner kick. 
Second corner kick for the Cougars. Reagan Kachow to take it. Kachow's dad, Richie, played on the U.S. men's national team. Coming in for a punch was Wardle. Now the defensive line having to hold it off. And Kafusi does just that. Santa Cruz, the extra offering high. The bounding ball was over the, short, the shoulder of Casey Wardle. But Taliana Kafusi along the goal line for Utah to keep Washington State off the board. A look back at this opportunity for the Cougars. Kafusi in there and got help from Ryan Cole as well. Utah keeps it tied, no score. As we enter the 31st minute. Bullock trying to work it back inside. Coppers there. It deflected Pizarro. The intent was to clear it for a throw in. Cougars reorganized defensively. Alex Schoenstatt. The Ole Miss transfer to Utah. Was working with it outside. Comes back in for Shane Hour. The freshman rips the shot off of Bridge Ariki, who has over 7,000 college minutes. Brandon Pizarro, Margie DeTrezio got to the right foot. This is a slow roller at Wardle. Patrizio trying to get to some space on this senior day, see if she can score another one at home. She's crossed the 4,000 career minute mark this afternoon. 11 goals last year was third best in the conference for DeTrezio, as we mentioned, has seven this year. And Kafusi, too much of hands on Keeley Copper, the Davidson transfer who's been an important cog in Washington State's defense this year. Copper also has eligibility for a COVID relief season. Santa Cruz is stop and go. Still staying after it in the corner, but was last to touch it. Courtney Brown won the ball for Utah. Brown has a couple PK goals. We mentioned Utah has scored on seven penalty kicks this year. That's up there with UCLA for best in the Pac-12. Bouncer that Wardle plays. Brown like Tappen, or uh, like Rekin, pardon me, also over 7,000 minutes in her career for Utah. Two years ago, Courtney Brown was Utah's team leader in goals. You can see Todd Schulenberger over there getting ready to bring Rahana Reed in. Schulenberger is the all-time winningest coach at Washington State, 98 wins, 63% win percentage. Brandon McReynolds hoping that ball would get by Courtney Brown and allow a counter for the Cougars. Instead, Katie O'Kane trying to get back middle with Lilia Bloom. Now the Cougars counter. Megan Santa Cruz working it out of there. Santa Cruz takes a tug from O'Kane, and there's a foul. This will stop things for talking to. To Katie O'Kane, who is clearly behind Brianna McReynolds, and O'Kane will get the yellow card. O'Kane came in 12 shots away on the season from the most shots for the Utes since 2017. As we mentioned, a former Washington Husky. Seven goals this season. Five of them have been from the penalty spot. WSU will get an opportunity from about 30 yards out. And Reagan Kachow standing over the ball for the Cougars. Referee Cedric Adams completes the booking. 
and sets the Utah line just outside of the 18. Cacho does have the one Pac-12 goal against Arizona. Here will elicit the set piece for the Cougars. Cacho goes right at net. It's over the crossbar. Be just a tad bit right as well. Couple substitutions coming for the Cougars. Rahana Reed, as we mentioned. And now Peyton Price getting an opportunity as well. Peyton Price really come on in Pac-12 plays. You look at Rahana Reed. Reed, a couple game winners. Also a goal against Cal in a 1-1 draw for Washington State. An important result in Pac-12 play for the Cougars against a really good Cal team. Cal, in fact, just beat Oregon a short while back, 8-1. Cougars see Oregon State and Oregon on the road next weekend. Brianna McReynolds, Rahana Reed to her left, offers to go back middle. A lot of coverage there for Utah. Courtney Brown came into the play. Reese Tappan trying to come challenger. Kennedy Shainauer, great flip of the field to the near side to Kelly Bullock. We'll look on a little combo play, but an offside flag up. Utah was relying on Lilia Bloom to help set that up. Bloom just had the nice back and forth. A few minutes back with Courtney Brown. Nadia Cooper not bothered too much. In net so far this afternoon, Washington State holds a 9-5 to five shot advantage. Cooper with one save. Casey Wardle on the other side for Utah has two. Coming up on the final 10 minutes of the first half of play. Megan Santa Cruz beats the defender. Goes out wide. Rahana Reed back to the left foot. Cross in there, cleared off by Alex Schoenstatt. Reed really trying to pester Schoenstatt. Megan Santa Cruz helps Washington State win another possession back. Santa Cruz, since checking in in the midfield, has been active. Another ball cut off by Lilia Bloom. It's been fierce competition in the midfield between these two teams. Out forward to Courtney Brown. Brandon McReynolds right in there, locked up with Lilia Bloom. McReynolds takes a shove, recollects. Was able to shield the ball. Bloom tackles it away. Brianna Pizarro trying to get it out of a dangerous spot. At least pushes Utah a little further back on the throw in. Ryan Cole, last year's assist leader for Utah. None this year for the Utes. It's been a part of the U.S. Youth National Team Training Center. Be a big run for Santa Cruz, and with how hard she's been working for the Cougars, wasn't going to have enough to get there. Schoenstatt went back via Wardle. Catch out, through ball. Detrizio lost her footing, ends up pinning the ball. And if a foul's called with Detrizio on the ground, it's inside the box for Washington State. The Referee was coming in and was calling to Trezio, who had the ball pinned. And in between both shin guards. Oh, 
Couldn't guard the ball like that to get back up into a position, but at first a really good job by Kacha to thread the needle into that spot for Detrezio. Here's another chance to run on. Detrezio gets it to the right foot. Wardle with a block. Detrezio unable to follow, and she might have had a cleat into Wardle. Wardle's grabbing the side of her head. Twice the Cougars find Detrezio on these last two opportunities. And this time, Margie Detrezio gets an opportunity to finish. Her 26th career goal would have put the Cougars up 1-0, but a brilliant job by Casey Wardle to take away the scoring chance and then get to the deflection. Wardle is up just having a long conversation with the referee. Certainly out back, Marin Granger wearing a captain's band for Utah, talking to the referee as well, trying to protect her goalkeeper. Margie Atrezio does get a short talking to. The Cougars have been right on trying to find space for Detrezio a couple times. Blaylock up to Kafusi. Bridget Rican has been the one who's had to be on Kafusi after stepping up, though. Taliana Kafusi has a chance to get out to the far side of the field. Back and forth. Kennedy Shaneauer and Taliana Kafusi go, and Shaneauer rockets one well wide. Another sub coming for Washington State. This will be for Margie Detrezio. Matt Lewis for the Cougars. Two Arizonans swap positions. Lewis, who's out of Queen Creek. Has not played for the Cougars since the Arizona State match. Did not see her earlier this weekend against Colorado. Lewis has an assist this year against Eastern Washington. Come from behind win for WSU. They've had three of those after trailing at the break. Rahana Reed surrounded by Utes. Blaylock ends up clearing it. Brown looking behind for Blaylock once again. This out to midfield. Kafusi and Rican. Rican had it off the volley. Utah's trying to come to the near side, but there's a little more space. Lilia Bloom drops it off to Katie O'Kane. O'Kane offers this near side with Kelly Bullock. Running from outside the boundary back in, Ryan Cole and cleared off by the Cougars. Less than five minutes to go in the first half. 10-6 Washington State advantage in shots, 3-1 in shots on goal. But Casey Wardle's made all three need, needed saves. I mentioned Peyton Price getting some time. You saw her there. All 64 minutes coming into action today for her. It occurred in Pac-12 play. She has worked her way into Todd Schulenberger's rotation for the Cougars. Sophomore from Sammamish, Washington, who played with Cougar teammate Jensen Linz, the club circuit for Crossfire in the ECNL. Utah bringing out Katie O'Kane for Kayla Standish. Bridget Rican read the play in front of Kafusi. Alex Schoenstatt to Taliana Kafusi. Peyton Price getting it off her feet over to Standish. Now to Schoenstatt. Santa Cruz and Tappan both there. Santa Cruz comes out with it, was held on to. She was trying to break out of there. Took a tug, it'll be Washington State ball. 4 fouls to either side in this first half. 
coming up on three minutes to play in the first half. And in the midfield a shove on Kayla Standish. So the Cougars get to set it a bit closer. Bridget Rekin offers quick to Megan Santa Cruz along the side. Reese tapping up to Rahana Reed out to Santa Cruz. Cleared out by Alex Schoenstatt. Nat Lewis, she had a tremendous goal in non-conference play for the Cougars. Actually, I'm thinking of Naomi Clark's goal in non-conference play against Weber State. Nat Lewis, we mentioned, had the important assist against Eastern Washington. No goals yet for Nat Lewis. But Nat is the daughter of a former NFL All-Pro safety, Michael Lewis. Bridget Rican was behind Taliana Kafusi, gets back to it. Bullock, too slow, trying to leave it for Cole and Brianna McReynolds, a nice hustle back into the play. WSU has a chance to mount one more attack in the final minute and a half of this first half of play. Important match for the Cougars this afternoon. Trying to get a result here against Utah and continue to have an opportunity to move up in the Pac-12 standings. Cougars also have to play the RPI game down the stretch. They have a better RPI than every opponent left on their schedule. Nadia Cooper scrambling to that ball. So every match here is important for the Cougars as they're kind of right on the conventional cut line of where you want to be RPI-wise to make the NCAA tournament. And because of where those RPI numbers sit for the teams remaining on Washington State's schedule. I think saying four wins is a must is a bit extreme, but slip ups can't happen at this point. Nat Lewis, hard collision into Marin Granger. Still the athletic training staff comes in to tend to the freshman. A yellow card given to Marin Granger. That is a yellow card on Utah, number two, Marin Granger. So the attention turns to Lewis. Marin Granger is still talking to the referee, trying to plead her case after being given a yellow card. This is a look back. And you can see Lewis trying to continue on. Look like both players were trying to. Well, that's what. That's what Marin Granger is saying. She's saying both of us were trying to get a header to the ball. These are the plays you just hate to see right now in college soccer. It's good to see Lewis up there to a seated position. Now will be helped off by the Washington State Athletic Training Staff. Doing so mostly under her own power. The injured player is number 18, Nat Lewis. Number 10, Isabella Weaver. Isabella Weaver will take the spot of Nat Lewis in the final 26 seconds of this first half. And after the yellow card, the second yellow card against Utah in this first half of play, 
there will be a good opportunity for the Cougars from just outside the 18. We saw Reagan Kachow try to go direct. Her last opportunity. Utah places a five-player wall. Right out in front of Kachow. Brandon McReynolds is lurking to the left for the Cougars. Now a referee talking to all the players who are getting ready over to the right, as you see it, of the Utah wall to try to crash in on a potential service. This is a critical set piece for the Cougars at the end of the half. It could loom large. Kachow to take it. Goes around the wall. The official stopped things. There was a player down already before the kick. It looks like we're going to bring it back to do it again. Now it's set. There's the whistle. Kachow goes right at it. Wardle makes the catch. So Wardle's been right there when needed here in the first half for Utah. Just catching up the clock here as the final seconds of the first half tick away. And we will end scoreless at the end of the first 45 between Utah and Washington State. The Cougars have had their opportunities putting shots on Casey Wardle, but she, so far for Utah, has answered the call in the first 45. We are scoreless at the half. Pac-12 women's soccer this afternoon brought to you by Giza Credit Union will pause for about uh, 15 minutes or so, and then we'll be back to set you up for the second half of play. No score currently between the Utah Utes and the Washington State Cougars on the Cougars Senior Day in Pullman. Back here in Pullman, no score starting the second half. Pac-12 women's soccer this afternoon presented by Giza Credit Union on Senior Day for Washington State. And five of the six matches right now in the Pac-12 are scoreless at the half. The only one with a score is Stanford up 1-0 on Oregon. A look at the stats from the first half of play. And as we said, a good job by Casey Wardle has faced a few tough shots from Washington State, and she's handled all of them well. The four saves have kept this score even at zero. Washington State spent some time in its locker room over to the right of the grandstand. And we'll see what changes are made in the second half for these two teams. Quick survey of both sides and the change for Washington State to start half number two is in the midfield, Marin Wilden got the start this afternoon. Megan Santa Cruz, it appears, will be in the midfield for the Cougars. Also, instead of Anaya Cutler, the Cougars will start up top with Naomi Clark and Margie Detrizio. For Utah, it appears to be the same 11 who started here in half number two. Utah started with possession. Washington State will open half two with possession. Cougars did have a free kick with about 25 seconds left in the half that Wardle made the catch on. That was the last good opportunity. But there were a few shots that the Cougars ripped in there. Megan Santa Cruz was really impressive after being added in in the first half of play, and that earns her this opportunity in half number two. Ball just outpaces her to the end line there from Brianna Pizarro. Just 
WSU this season six and four at home. Three and one with a draw away from Pullman for the Cougars. Utah, I mentioned, has been good on the road. They came into this weekend four wins, a loss, and four draws away from Salt Lake City. They suffered just their second loss away from home earlier in the week against Washington over in Seattle. Well, heel touch that goes to Reese Tappen. Anaya Cutler had a couple shots in the first half for the Cougars. Reagan Kachow with four. Marichi Detrizio with three. Bridger Rican had one on a header on a corner kick. The Utah shots, two for Taliana Kafusi, two for Kennedy Shanauer, one each for Ryan Cole and Kelly Bullock. Kelly Bullock puts a cross on. Kachow knocked it down. Brianna McReynolds gets back into the play. Kennedy Schonauer was there as well. Look for a moment on that rebounded ball like Schonauer. If she could get the ball to her feet, was going to have an opportunity to take advantage of Nadia Cooper being down on the turf. Alex Schoenstatt trying to cross it. Off of Reese Tappen, a deep throw. On the offensive territory for Utah. Tappen, who assisted the game winner on Thursday for Margie DeTrizio, trying to race to it again. The foul was called on. Oh, there was an offside flag up, pardon me. So Reese Tappen will take it there. Second offside call on Utah. Brandon McReynolds. Down to Naomi Clark. Clark turns on the Jets to get between two. Crosses. And a flag up. Santa Cruz headed it down for Kacha, who's trying to recollect and get a shot on Wardle. Now each team trades an offside deep in attacking territory. Errant pass, McReynolds gets to it, puts it right in on Wardle. Wardle the four saves in the first half. Adds one to her tally here in half number two. Cougars still generating some good opportunities towards the attacking third to start half number two. After Utah had a dangerous look in the Washington State box. Out to Kelly Bullock it goes. Katie O'Kane, Taliana Kafusi. Kelly Bullock gets it back from Kayla Standish. Megan Santa Cruz really chasing that midfield. The Cougar freshman. Scored a game winner against San Diego State earlier in the season for her first career goal. She's really putting in a ton of work rate on the match this afternoon. Brianna McReynolds trying to stutter step around Courtney Brown. It's picked off by Kelly Bullock. Keely Copper now marking Taliana Kafusi. Brianna Pizarro takes a shove from Kelly Bullock. There were a couple yellow cards against Utah in the first half of play as well. Cougars reset it quick to Megan Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz to a left foot. Granger got in the way. 
Marin Granger off Santa Cruz for the throw in. Granger had one of those yellow cards in the first half. Collision with Nat Lewis. Katie O'Kane got one as well. Gotch out trying to get it to Megan Santa Cruz. Cougars continuing to try to dare that pass in the midfield. Pizarro trying to get back middle. Was looking more for Naomi Clark and ended up wide of the net. WSU was holding on to a 1-0 lead in the second half earlier this week. Detrezio gets it back into a spot for Naomi Clark. But maybe a little indecision. Clark, who has the three goals this year. Weber State, Texas A&M, Eastern Washington, the goals for Clark. Looking for a first Pac-12 tally. Bullock out to Shane Hour. Katie. Katie O'Kane to the right foot finishing for Utah. Past a diving Nadia Cooper. A ball that spit away from the Cougars and the former Husky tallies a goal against Washington State. O'Kane's eighth of the season, just her third that's not a PK. The former top 100 recruit out of Bishop Blanchett High School on the west side of the state of Washington. She just turned around Bridget Rican and passed Nadia Cooper. One nothing Utah. Just over seven minutes into the second half. And now for Todd Schulenberger's Cougars to find an equalizer. We mentioned three times this year they've come from behind. Including a spot like this against Eastern Washington back in the season's opening match. Certainly a lot of time to try to get that done for the Cougs, but Utah strikes first here this afternoon on goal number eight of the season for Katie O'Kane, the Utah leader. Whistle before the throw in for Schoenstatt. Taliana Kafusi is looking for Courtney Brown. O'Kane, Shane Hour, Brown, out to Schoenstatt. Unassisted the goal for O'Kane, and Kafusi was trying to get Katie O'Kane into a spot once again there. Looking for a little give and go. Just at the top of the 18. Just the two shots on goal for Utah, but one of them a score now and a one nothing lead. Good recovery after slipping by Naomi Clark to get it to Lindsey Turner. Reverses the field out wide to Megan Santa Cruz. Brianna Pizarro running on to it. Pizarro holds on to get across. Detrezio is waiting. 
Was hoping it was going to airmail Shane Stat. Now Detrezio chases it down and crosses in. Bobbling ball. Clark unable to finish it. Clark gets it back corner of the six. Cougars in a dangerous area. Boy, that ball got away from Wardle. She didn't know where it was. Crisis averted. Detrezio off the crossbar. Two loud opportunities for the Cougars shortly following the Utah goal. But the Utes survived the scare. Nadia Cooper lost her footing. Chasing back into the box. Utah countering opportunity outside with Katie O'Kane. O'Kane goes to Cooper, it's caught there. Cooper elects to kick it out to Santa Cruz who's trying to win a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Ryan Cole chases down in front of it, keeps it inbounds. Advantage has been signaled to Utah. Bullock to the end line and Bullock off of Copper for a corner kick. Keely Copper saying that she deflected it off of Kelly Bullock. An update from Los Angeles, Washington State Volleyball with a win in four sets against UCLA. Still some work to do from the lower soccer field for the Cougars this afternoon in Pullman. Lilia Bloom back for Utah. In time for this first corner kick for the Utes. Now leading one nothing behind the 53rd minute goal from Katie O'Kane. Cooper goes flying for it. Copper keeps it on the ground. Detrezio has a lot of room to run. Katie O'Kane coming to shut it down. There's a long carry forward for Detrezio. O'Kane ended up clearing it. Cougars will sub Rahana Reed for Megan Santa Cruz. So Katie O'Kane now has goals in her career in Pac-12 play against Oregon, California, Colorado, and Washington State. The go-ahead here in the 53rd minute. Wardle going to chase down this ball and gets there. What a dangerous sequence she faced just a couple minutes ago. Casey Wardle and the Cougars had a ball bobble out of her possession right near the goal line. Rana Reed stepping in, Brianna McReynolds as well. In the midfield, Detrezio stops it under the cleats. Now Reese Tappen serving in, a header wide by Reagan Kachow. WSU continuing to mount some opportunities. This time Reese Tappen with the on-target service. Reagan Kachow flying in there looking for her third goal of the season. Lindsey Turner steps into a pass. Turner flying towards the corner. There to cover Alex Schoenstatt. Lindsay Turner again, trying to flick on to Detrezio. The light bouncer picked up by Wardle. Or 14 minutes into the second half. It's been almost seven minutes since the Utah goal. WSU has answered with three pretty good opportunities. Naomi Clark, Margie DeTrezio, and Reagan Kachow, all different types of plays. Clark trying to get off a rebounded bobbling ball. DeTrezio from wide side of the box off the crossbar, and then Kachow and what was a would-be header. 
Rahana Reed off of Ryan Cole for a Washington State corner kick. Third corner kick coming up for the Cougars. Both Kachow and Reed over in the corner with it. WSU in the first half almost got Bridget Reekin on the receiving end of a corner kick that would have made it 1-0 Cougars. This time it sails long. Granger had a clearance for a moment. The ball popped back in to Wardle. Now Utah definitely going to get pressed by Washington State. We've talked about the importance of a result for the Cougars today. He's tapping to Brianna McReynolds. Catch out back to McReynolds and the shot high. McReynolds who had a game winner last year against St. Mary's, 14 career goals, 12 of them in her Oregon State career before spending these last two on the Palouse with Washington State. Play lock again up to Bullock. Cougars have Reese Tappen. Really kind of in this attacking mid, really rolling up. Look to be off the head of Alex Schoenstatt. That's what the officials see as well. Utah abruptly wins it back off the throw in. Reagan Kotchow trying to get it across. Keely Copper stepping in front of the pass for Taliana Kafusi. Katie O'Kane stepping through in the midfield. Kelly Bullock. Bullock trying to get back left tap and tackles it away. A corner kick coming for Utah. Ryan Cole will take the corner kick. Watch out for the target of Kafusi crashing to the neck. The tall forward. It went short with Shane Hour. Shown stat back into Kafusi. Cooper's there. Kafusi was offside. It appeared so on that ball put back in by Alex Schoenstatt and the flag did go up. Ball was off the post anyways with Cooper coming off the line to try to take away the opportunity. Pace on that ball for Naomi Clark. The pace of it caused it to be out of play first before the shove and what would have been a foul call by the referee. Clark immediately tries to get right back into it. How about that over the shoulder flick from O'Kane. Copper, good header forward. Granger returns one to the Washington State bench. Sub coming for WSU. Marin Wilden will come in for Naomi Clark. 
Todd Schulenberger adds some experience to this WSU attack. 25 minutes for the Cougars to try to find an equalizer. They would still want a game winner in that stretch too. Try to score two in 25. Turned around by Ryan Cole off of Rahana Reed. Bullock the lats to touch that one. Reed looking to earn a cross. Kept it low. Granger stabbed it out. Kachow takes a shot. Headed on by Brianna McReynolds. More of a service to McReynolds. Rather for the header on to Wardle who makes another catch right there in front of the Utah net. Six saves now for Wardle. Has been so important against the Cougars today. Lindsey Turner took a tug from Taliana Kafusi. Bridge Arikin calling everybody forward. Wilden, a tall target, trying to get on the receiving end of that. Tappen able to keep it in play. Turner gets tripped up. And another card coming for Utah. Well, maybe not, just a talking to. Thought it was going to be a third yellow. Kennedy Shanauer. Not her third yellow, but the teams. McReynolds. Trying to get back to the end. That one a clean takeaway by Shane Hour. Reese Tappen steps back in. Hard challenge. Ball was stopped under those two players and our referee stops it. There was no initial whistle at the tackle from Tappen. There'll be a drop ball here. Now some confusion. Margie DeTrizio enters the conversation to figure out what's going on. The only thing I could think of is that referee Cedric Adams is saying it was a foul on Tappen. Back towards Wardle in the Utah goal. Detrezio steps up to apply a little pressure. Cooper keeping it there in front of Kafusi. Detrezio, very nice little touch. McReynolds goes right around Schoenstatt. McReynolds lost the footing on the crossing try. Brilliant first half of the play. Unlucky break on the second half for Brianna McReynolds. The Cougars will bring Jensen Linz in. Linz, a redshirt freshman from Issaquah. Third Pac-12 match for her now played against both Cal and Colorado for the Kooks. Expect to continue to see Washington State really attack the midfield. Reese Tappen is up in that role, having to press into Utah.
Marin Wilden kept it in with a heel touch to Jensen Lins. Lins down to Detrezio, who's whistled offside. Now the third offside call in Washington State, three for each side. Cougars have an 18-7 shot disparity, but no goal yet this afternoon on the Palouse. Long run into the corner to shield off the throne for Alex Schoenstatt. Schoenstatt, despite being the Ole Miss transfers from Sammamish, played for the OL Reign Academy. Leading goal scorer there over six season, Jensen Linz. Had the ball knocked out by Kelly Bullock. Schoenstatt also was a non-roster invite to the NWSL OL Reign training camp, playing with players like Megan Rapino, Allie Long, Sophie Huerta. Detrezio back to Turner. Turner missed the target, Reed. Now Reed and Kachow working it back for another crossing opportunity. Rahana Reed off of Ryan Cole, and Cole could not save it along the end line. Corner kick coming for the Cougars. And that's another. Corner kick taken by Kachow. Rikin got in there. Collision with Kafusi. Reese Tappen has a chance to hold it into an attacking position for WSU. Onside for Kachow. Kachow to the end line, turning it around. Heel touch. Pizarro just kept with it. No, they said it was outs. Goal kick coming for Utah. Still pressure being applied by Wazoo. As it's been all afternoon, Casey Wardle just gonna build it from the back and we'll continue to see the Cougars pressure up. Ball has really stayed here on Utah's side of the field of late. Reese Tappen ensuring that that continues to be the case. Margie DeTrezio tried to Hold her ground, tap and retreating back in to the center of the defensive side for WSU. Marin Wilden heading it down for Detrezio. Linz, let's see if she can collect this, not quite. Jones dad to Bullock. Utah's looking for a countering opportunity that can cross midfield. They do so by getting it out wide to Kennedy Shainauer. Shainauer via Courtney Brown, now Alex Schoenstatt. Bullock setting it up, Reekin stepping in through it. The goal in the 53rd minute from Katie O'Kane right now, only score in the contest. Foul there on Washington State. Fouls are even at seven aside. Coming up on 16 minutes to play. Ryan Cole takes the free kick. Lanched the back of a header for Margie DeTrezio. Jensen Linz trying to get out of there. Again, could not keep it in on the sideline. Couple subs coming. Megan Santa Cruz back for WSU. Looks like Utah might have Bailey Jackson for the first time. 
Jackson Jr. from Fair Oaks, California. Reserve role now in 13 matches. Two shots, one shot on goal. O'Kane trying to get around Turner. Turner tackled it wide, but for a corner kick. Utah has both Ryan Cole heading over that direction along with Lilia Bloom. Fifteen minutes to go. Will the 53rd minute goal for Katie O'Kane stand up as her third career game winner? Corner to be taken by Ryan Cole. Went short with Blum into O'Kane, lost the footing. Wilden keeping in front, back out to Blum and offside. Keely Copper wants, well, she wanted for a moment to go across the field. Reese Tappen asking everyone to go forward. Copper wanted to bring it to the top of your screen. She was alone up there. Detrezio trying to chase it back. It was put back towards the keeper by Schoenstatt. Detrezio chasing this ball, gets there, keeps it in play, and goes off of Alex Schoenstatt for a corner kick. This gives the Cougars some life. Brianna Pizarro going over to take it. WSU can be very dangerous in these corner kick opportunities, especially with Bridget Rican. The fifth year senior would love to net one on senior day. Rican tries to get in there. Brown had it first. Megan Santa Cruz volleys it towards the top of the box. Utah can fend that off just for the goal kick. Utah survives the fifth corner kick try for WSU. 5-3 corner advantage for the Cougars, 18-7 in shots. But the six saves for Casey Wardle on a total of 18 Cougar shots allowed Katie O'Kane to come up with a 53rd minute goal a great individual effort around Bridget Rican, and to slot it past Nadia Cooper for the one nothing Utah lead. This is the final road match for Utah. Two contrasting situations for these two teams. Utah will go back to Salt Lake City for the rest of the regular season. Washington State will not play in Pullman again. Reeking down along the end. It was last clipped by Lilia Bloom. Cougars done so much of building from the back. Nadia Cooper will now have the goal kick to get it back towards midfield. Lindsay Turner does her best to flick it on. Can Margie DeTrezio get there? No, Mary Granger steps into it. And Granger is the one whistled for a foul. No, they're going to say DeTrezio, excuse me, whistled for the foul. Thought the way they had pointed it that it was going WSU's direction for a moment. I think the Utah bench did too. They're frustrated for the moment. Little warning's been given to Utah by the looks at it just to keep things moving. Jensen Linz got the ball out to Brianna Pizarro. But 1v1 taken on by Bailey Jackson. WSU gets the handball call. 
Italiana Cafusi trying to control that ball in the midfield. Tapping in Copper out to Pizarro. Jensen Linz, if she can get there, no, not enough. Ball needed to check up just a little bit more to the end line. Jensen Linz will come off for Brianna McReynolds. Granger and Wardle continuing to have discussions with referee Cedric Adams. And now there's a little talking to, to the Washington State bench and Todd Schulenberger. Short start in the build for Blaylock. WSU trying to apply some pressure for something ill-advised towards the Utah net. WSU didn't have anyone forward for that ball from Pizarro. Under 10 minutes, Wardle retreating. The Cougars will go put some pressure on. Now she has to pick it up. WSU is running out of chances in their home finale. Detrezio, nice flick on to McReynolds. Tried to get it back through for Margie. We've seen a lot of players losing their footing today. Detrezio, another one who couldn't get on through. Cut down by Lilia Bloom. Kelly Bullock now. Bullock, a shot well too high, chipped it way over the net. Utah bringing back Kennedy Shainauer. Nadia Cooper again trying to drive it to midfield. Bridger Rican got down in front of the bouncing ball. Marin Wilden. Keeping it squared out with Brianna Pizarro. Pizarro to McReynolds. McReynolds is on side. McReynolds trying to get it back middle. Reagan catch out, a header, and she scores! We're even at one. Brianna McReynolds to Reagan Kachow, her third goal of the season, second Pac-12 goal. And McReynolds' first assist of the year for Washington State. And WSU can now try to come from behind and strike some big momentum in the final eight minutes. Beautiful ball forward here for Brianna McReynolds. How about this chip to Kachow? Saw Wardle moving to her left and Kachow angles the header to the far side post. So Reagan Kachow Third goal of the freshman season. Rahana Reed comes back for the Cougars and WSU presses on. Trying to find a way in the final 10 minutes to cut a one nothing deficit and a foul called on Keeley Copper holding down Taliana Kafusi. Now the crowd back into it in Pullman. Copper trying to come up into where Cole was operating with it. Katie O'Kane had the goal in the 53rd minute for Utah. She was there. Lindsey Turner last to touch it out of play. Ryan Cole. Last touch by 
Kachow. Corner kick coming. Good job by Courtney Brown. WSU has to cover this corner kick. Cougars can take a deep breath at the moment. A loss would have been disaster. A result at least helps for the Cougars. Corner kick was wide all the way. Leads to a goal kick for Nadia Cooper. Still the Cougars trying to find a way to get the winning result, but a result was a must have with the state of the RPI and where the Cougars need to be to position themselves for NCAA tournament play. So the 82nd minute goal right now, the equalizer for Reagan Kachow. Six minutes to play. Margie DeTrizio weaving out of traffic. Rahana Reed sees a spot out with Reese Tappet. Reese Tappet serves one in. Margie DeTrizio's there, coming over the top, punching it is Wardle. Another put back on by the Cougars. And DeTrizio took some contact from Casey Wardle. Boy, DeTrizio was in a good spot. Trying to head that on to put the Cougars in front. Wardle with the six saves still. A header back on, DeTrizio trying to race to it. DeTrizio got a foot to it. Wardle was worried that it had touched Marin Granger. So Wardle scrambled to get on the ball. Wardle, another one in the midfield. Marin Wilden up to Detrezio. Detrezio is so good of, kind of for lack of a better term, backing down a defender. But it's speed by Kachow to the outside. Gets it back to the corner of the 18 for Pizarro. Pizarro chips it. Wilden's there for a header. Another close one for the Cougars. Couple seniors trying to connect to give WSU the lead. Wardle with her seventh save, a foul in the midfield. Rahana Reed hurrying to get to it so the Cougars can reset a free kick, but WSU will want to take a, just a beat of time here for Bridget Rican because they've got a a good set piece player here from inside the midfield who can try to set something up for the Kooks. Here it is by Rican. Brianna McReynolds trying to run onto it. Wardle off the line to come make the catch. Still, Wardle has struggled to get it away from net and continues to push everyone out to midfield. WSU has been winning these 50-50 balls in the midfield. That a better goal kick from Wardle. Still, Turner gets in front of Kafusi. <laughs> Lindsey Turner at 5'3", out in front of Taliana Kafusi at 5'11". Back into the box, Wardle calling everybody out to midfield again. Pizarro had the header off the goal kick. It's dropped for the throw into Bullock, who gave it off to a Utah teammate. Bullock gets it back. Bullock, racing corner flag, and Bullock gets tripped up by Pizarro. So an opportunity for Utah now. Ryan Cole, who had the throw in that started this possession into the attacking third, will set up for the free kick. The referee signaling where it will be taken from. Less than three minutes to go. Utah stacking attackers right outside the Washington State six. Now Cole sends it in. Bridget Rican tapped it out of there. You're gonna see some folks Really dip into the gas tank here. 
An offside flag up against Utah. It's coming back Washington State's direction. Maurice Tappen setting it down to get it going. Upfield to Margie DeTrezio. Heel flick. Wardle in the box back in front of net. There's nobody covering the Utah net. And back out wide it goes for a WSU throw in. Under two minutes, the Cougars will make a substitution. Naomi Clark coming in for Brianna McReynolds. WSU to it quickly. Reese tapping to throw in for the Cougars. The clock was stopped at 88.06. We'll get that corrected on screen. Header off tap in, and Shanauer is who they say earned the throw in. That was big for the Cougars. It looked like it was off Shanauer. Copper steps up into one. It's still Utah's throw. Utah's scrambling, trying to get an attack on. Shane Aaron in front of tap and Reed tries to help take it away. Bridger Regan stepping up into it. Whistle comes and a foul on Katie O'Kane. So again, the Cougars hustling to try to restart things. Clock will be stopped. Cedric Adams. Walking Katie O'Kane away from of all the actions they continue to talk about the last foul. Not much left in terms of attacks for these two teams. WSU equalized in these final 10 minutes. Keely Copper keeping it in for Marin Wilden. Margie DeTrezio trying to get it to her left foot. Shot is wide. No contact by a Utah player. It's a goal kick coming. Final minute. Eighty second minute. Cougars equalized. Utah took a one nothing lead in the 53rd. Will there be a late strike? DeTrezio trying to find Clark. Couldn't get it past Granger. Pizarro trying to get up to it. Now Bullock can send it Utah's direction. Rican comes in back to midfield with Kachow. Kachow had the header to equalize. Goes out wide for Clark. WSU is going to have an opportunity. Naomi Clark a little too long at her feet. Picked away by Ryan Cole. Brianna Pizarro trying to hold it on for the Cougars. Kelly Bullock now Lindsey Turner and Turner with the foul. The seconds ticking off. The clock will stop with eight seconds left. But from this spot, Utah would have gotten to kick it from here. I think the officials just blown the whistle that it's over if he didn't call for a clock stoppage. And there's confusion between both benches right now. And Cedric Adams has said that it is over. He did not intend for the clock to stop. So that's the end. Full 90 minutes, 1-1, Utah and Washington State. WSU equalizes in the 82nd, thanks to Reagan Kachow, a header in on the assist from Brianna McReynolds and Brianna Pizarro. And the Cougars get a result here to finish their home slate. 1-1 against the Utah Utes. Big thanks to our entire crew for all of you for being with us this afternoon. Pac-12 women's soccer this afternoon. Goals for O'Kane and Kachow, but we finish in a 1-1 draw. Thanks for being with us. Pac-12 women's soccer presented by Giza Credit Union.